All right, guys, we are back. Bare Knuckle with Fight Mike. I'm here with one of the new signees of Bare Knuckle, Sharissa Sagala. How's it going? February 5th is right around the corner. You got a fight coming up, right? Yeah, it's coming up soon. I'm ready for it. So you're fighting uh, Taylor Starling, right? Yeah. What, yes. what do you know about her? Um, She's more of a kickboxer. Um, I've seen... She doesn't really like a lot of pressure. I mean, I've just seen she she comes in pretty strong. She's a little wild. But yeah. Yeah. So you come from MMA background. And I'm just, I'm sure you probably got this question from people. Like, why, why are you doing this? You know, pretty girl, then then bare knuckles to cut your face. Why did you move from MMA to bare knuckle? You get your face cut in MMA too. I mean, you know, I love boxing. Um, uh-huh. So my background, I'm uh, I'm a black belt in jujitsu. Um, that's why I love MMA because for me, it's like you can showcase everything. But I really fell in love with boxing, and you know, they DM me on Facebook and are like, "We're like, have you ever been interested?" And I'm like, "I'm always up for something new." And so, you know, it was just right. It was just the right timing. And just when they came up to me, I was like, sure. I mean, there's nothing going on in California right now. You can't really fight right now unless you're in certain promotions. And so even the promotion where I was at right before, they haven't been doing anything and they were trying. But with COVID and everything, this just seemed like the perfect chance to jump over to something different. Yeah. You were fighting in combat there, right? Before this? Yes. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I mean everything's like so up in the air right now. So I could only imagine as a fighter, your, your opportunities are limited. So yeah, you know, this, that's bare knuckles really like kind of like the talk of the town right now, you know, like, yeah, they're we, so new. And I, yeah. They're so new. I, that's what I love too. Cause it's like when the UFC first started out, it was so new and people were probably like thinking the same thing. And now bare knuckles, it's similar. You're starting, you're starting to see some names go over there. Yeah, and speaking so of you're you're at 125, right? Um, I'm fighting at 125, yes. I I mean, I know she's a face that everyone's talking about, but Paige Van Zant, I think that'd be amazing. I would love it. Dude, I'm I'm here to keep going. And I mean, I'll fight whoever they put in front of me. I'm not scared of anybody. I, I won't back down from any fight. So I invite that. So um you have a black belt in jujitsu. Yes. So you have cauliflower? <laughs> no, I have a little bit, not that much. I feel like I've gotten cauliflower more from uh, MMA, and it's usually when I go with shorter people. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't that often. <laughs> How long did it take you to get your black belt? Oh, um, I got it last a year ago. Um, I've been doing it for about 10, 11 years. So about 10 years around there. How has... Um... I mean, I know for some people, I mean, like we said, like depends where you live, not only with the fights, but also like with training, like I'm here out here in Atlanta and there's like jujitsu gyms and like MMA gyms. They're pretty much full go. How is this, how has it been for you? Like, are you like limited with like training with anything? Like, like it's only a select few people. So it started that way, but I think a lot of gyms at this point are just like, it's do or die I feel like because um, pretty much if it's either close your doors and close down shop or stay open and you know everybody has their own stance on it and I feel very comfortable with the people that I train with so I have I've been lucky to not be that limited I have um, some team members at different gyms that you know have stopped training because they have family members that have been affected and whatnot um, but for the most part there's still people there I think for me the biggest thing is the actual um the gym gyms like um the actual workout gyms are where it's the hardest hit because those ones actually close so lucky for me i I know a couple people and i have a bunch of my strength training stuff here Mm -hmm. um in the garage so it's not like it's hard to put together that kind of workout but of course you still miss that aspect of getting someone a, a little bit more trained than you that's teaching you and really pushing you for that part but i mean i've got a good team so they're pretty good right there on my back (laughs) So you're officially signed with, um, with Paul's department, with the bare knuckle management. Is that, um, 
so they're they're yeah they're they're promoting me and doing all this for me so yeah yeah paul's you know paul's a good guy like i was actually initially supposed to be headed to the events and doing interviews like that but mm -hmm. the COVID thing got really weird so then we're like hey, we gotta wait on this and i'm kind of sitting back and i'm like i really want to get in the interviews and really start talking to all of you so i was like you know what i'll just do the podcast why not it's easier let everyone's doing zoom podcasts right now anyways right yes yes they are <laughs> so many <laughs> i know i see them everywhere and nobody's doing the bare knuckles so i was like you know what i told paul and he's like yeah let's do it so yeah it's fun so besides like fighting are you like into anything else like you know i'm like podcasting or anything entertainment or is there anything else that you're doing I'm actually, so I'm actually very, very, very busy. I put a lot of, uh, of time into doing a lot of different things. Um, I'm in college still. Um, okay. So I did everything a little bit late, but right now I'm working on my BA for um, exercise physiology. Um, long term, I actually want to be a sports uh, physician. So I still have a long ways to go, but um, I also have a lot of like side interests. I actually love um, photography. And so oh. I take classes yeah so I take some classes in, in college to get a little extra but this is the time to do it I bought a lot of equipment while we were on quarantine and couldn't do anything else so mm -hmm. yeah more of it's for me eventually I'm gonna get out there and probably put some stuff together um I've been putting things around the house you know doing those canvases that you can buy like a Costco or whatnot I don't know if you guys have Costco out there but we have Costco over here yeah we have it out here yeah yeah so so getting like those canvases putting the books together Oh, very good. Yeah. So I work in the film and TV business and more recently I've learned to take my own headshots. So I guess I'm kind of a little bit of photographer or whatever, but yeah, you know, it's all kind of one and the same. So yeah, they asked me for some pictures. I was like, well, I got a camera because I'm like the ones that I have, you might not want because they're labeled with other organizations. But I was like, I got a camera, a tripod, I can go take pictures for you. So I sent them a bunch of pictures. I'm like, because it's better than doing it on the phone, the phone because it gets really pixelated. Mm -hmm. So with the professional cameras that you can get, it's way better doing your own headshots. Not that hard. Yeah. The lighting, yeah. I think, is the hardest. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's everything. If you don't get that right, because as soon as you, the eye looks at something, yeah. even if like you don't call it out, it's a, it's your, your subconsciously seeing that's what you're saying. Oh yeah. So it doesn't matter if everything else is like perfect. If the lighting, lighting's off. Yeah. Cause it shadows you the wrong way. can make you look a little bit bigger. can make mm -hmm. you look smaller. Yeah. It distorts everything. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you too. So since you come from the MMA world, got the big fight that's coming up this next week in McGregor and Poirier. Who do you think is going to take that one? I like them both, but I really like Poirier. I've always liked Poirier. I was excited about some of these last ones because um, I know like Carlos Condit fought um, and Max Holloway fought. And I like both of them. And I was so excited because people were like, no, I think, you know, guitar is going to get it. I was like, no, I, I, I like Holloway. I think he's going to get it. And I was right on with that one. Um, but Poirier is, you know, he's, he's been on, he's been on a streak and I really like it. I like his style. Connor's got some good hands though. That he's left hand. Yeah. Yep. I, th I think he's just, gonna, I mean, uh, you know, Poirier just seems like he's just a really like, Nice guy. Not to say that Connor's not, because I think Connor does <laughs> plays a character from what I heard from behind the scenes. He's actually a nice guy. But Poirier just seems <laughs> like he's just a stand up guy. And like, you know, he's really good, improved since their last fight. But I just think the way they match up, I just think Connor's going to win again. I hear that a lot. Yeah. I hear that a lot. I'm like, it all depends on how they're training. But yeah. Mark, Connor's already got, I was like, so Connor's already gotten there. And I've seen a lot of people fade once they get there. Cause I mean, he, he's fought, you know, his Mayweather fight, the Diaz, and now he, he has his, um, his whiskey company and it's like, he doesn't have a need to fight. So that's what I'm wondering if that's going to take it into any effect with his fighting style. Whereas Poirier keeps going. That's a, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Might have one foot out, right? You know how that goes when somebody has one foot out, right? Yeah. Am I, I, I feel like in all, it's going to mean more to Poirier to win. That's how I see it. 
I didn't really think about it that way. That's true. Maybe Connor's just like, you know what? Secretly hang him up and just go get the money. <laughs> He's on more money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, well, I don't want to take up too much uh, more of your time, but yeah, I just wanted to ask you them questions and introduce you and yeah, look forward to your fight on February 5th and hopefully I'll, I'll get to see you in person. But if not, I'd definitely like to do another one of these with you. Thanks. Yeah, anytime. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, what's your what's your Instagram? So I can follow you on Instagram. So Instagram is going to be Sharisa underscore sweetheart. Um, Twitter is at BKFC sweetheart. And then I have an MMA page um, on Facebook that's just Sharisa Seagala MMA. Bam. All right, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Check her out. She's going to be fighting February 5th. Um, fight Mike and we're out. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. So what I'll do is um, I'll text you my my Instagram handle and then I'll follow you right now. Okay. And I'll probably put it out tomorrow in the, mor in the morning. And then okay. I'll, I'll send you the link and then I'll make like a one minute video for Instagram, whatever. I'll send it to you and yeah. want to post it or whatever. Cool. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for your time again. Nice talking to you. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye.